Hi, this video is about Ubiquiti support in Splink's ISP framework. Uh, we will start with topology. I'll show you the topology that I have here. I have several clients, client devices, which are connected by radio to access point, and this access point is connected on Ethernet 1 to Edge router. And this Edge router will work as a PPPoE server. Ubiquiti access point is on bridge mode and CP is connected on wireless and over it it has a PPPoE client. So let's start with the first part which is the wireless authentication. We have a wireless radius authentication access point and it can, it can authenticate all users via radius server. First of all I add a new plan which is called wireless authentication. I'll call it wireless ubiquity, wireless UBNT. I save it, you see that there are zeros everywhere, so we do not need any speeds, anything is just for virus authentication of radios, radios of radios. And now I just choose the first customer available here and I will add two services. The first service for wireless authentication and the second for uh, PPPoE authentication. And this is the wireless authentication. User login can be whatever we need. So for example I will set up Wi-Fi and password 12345 or Wi-Fi 1 and add it. So this will cover the wireless authentication on access point and now the second is I'm defining the plan and I'm defining the service of PPPoE user 2 12345 and I will set up the permanent IP address to that customer 1050 then 554 for example. Add it and now I have two active services. One is with zero, zero price, nothing means it is just for wireless authentication and the second one is for PPPoE and the real speed limitations and everything. That's my access point and that's my station. So it, this is the client. So I will first add my access point here, Ubiquiti access point. So I add it and I put the NAS type Ubiquiti IP address and radio secret. And now the second one is... So now I configure it here. So I will go to my wireless. Second step was set up the wireless authentication VPA EAP, set up radio server the IP address of a radius and the port of accounting radio server and here I connect my customer on the same settings. So I just choose EAP, Wi-Fi 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is my password and I connect it. So save changes. I can test or I can save because I already tested everything it works and I'm saving it. So now I go back to main and I'm checking if the station is connecting. Yeah, it's connected, so it means that Radius gave, authenticated the user and gave him access. So now he's on wireless, but he doesn't have any IP address, anything. He cannot navigate, so we need to set up the PPPoE. And this is the second step, PPPoE Radius Authentication. Let's read the steps that we have here. The first one is configure edge router PPPoE server, then enable incoming packets on that server, and then we add edge router to Splinks and connect the customer. That's all. Probably I will start with the first step and add the router here. It's already added, but if I click on it, so it will show me the settings. The most important thing is choose the right NAS type, which is Ubiquiti. IP authorization accounting and radio secret. When I go to my networking, I can see all the supported attributes here the supported attributes for bandwidth limitation and for radius incoming port and accounting and all other needed stuff. This is by default pre-configured by Splinks for this type of NAS. Okay, now in Splinks we have added the router. We can start with PPPoE configuration of Edge router itself. 
let's connect via SSH there. I described in my menu how to make it with CLI, but also you can make it on web browser. So now I connect. I'm putting there the password and now I'm on SSH. So this is the setup. What I'm now changing and configuring edge router setup. So the customer from CPE will connect through bridge to my edge router via, with PPPoE technology. How to configure it? The first step is to update my version. Let's check what which version I have because all attributes are supported from version 1.5 and higher, so 1.8 is fine. So I don't need to make update, but if you don't have this version, please make the update. This is the second important part, set system IP override host name. Uh, this is the main IP address which is used like a loopback IP address and all radius packets are sent from this IP address. So we need to set up the IP address which is on Splinks and which I have on VAN port. Here, let's go to Splinks and check what IP address is set up here. So it's 10.0.166 and it's corresponding to that IP address. And let's check if cat UTC hosts show us, shows us that UBNT default. IP address is that. Yeah, that's my override entry. And now Edge Router will send Radius packet with right source IP address. Next step, I need to set up PPPoE server. Just enter all these commands, or I will do the same thing here on the web browser. So here I will show you the comments I already have entered, the PPPoA server, authentication mode radius, radius server with a key and client IP pool and interface where PPPoE server is activated. We can check that these settings are also available on the web page of the router. Here is the screenshot how it looks and also we will see it live now. Yeah, click on services, PPPoE, there is my IP pool start range. So the same settings as, as I added on the CLI, we can configure on the web. The next important part, which is not possible to configure on web, is to set up the incoming packets. Because we need to send some comments from Radius to Edge Router. We need to set up these two comments. The first was sudo, but this already I this entered, and then after reboot, this PPP or radius disconnect log should send, send, uh, show us what's happening if we received any incoming packets. So it should now it's not not showing us anything. Let's connect first the customer and then we'll disconnect him and see if incoming also works. So this is my customer. I will go to network settings and here I define the PPPoE. Username was user2, I think, yes, and the password is 12345. 12345, let's connect, save changes, and now my CPE is starting to connect through access point to my PPPoE server, and it will get the IP address, and it will become online. Let's check, let's go to customer search, the list, refresh, and here this customer is an online tab. And it's, it shows the MAC address, it shows the right IP address and the router, which is Edge Router. And we can now disconnect this session. So you can see this is 20 seconds online session. Let's disconnect it and check this attributes. Okay, attributes doesn't show us anything yet. Click and now let's check the incoming. Incoming walk. Now here it, it shows that customer was disconnected successfully, that Radius sent us the request disconnect. Now the customer connected back. We can check the show PPPoE server settings, how many users are active, which is important information. And then also important information is to check uh, what is this actual speed of PPPoE tunnel? It's not shown on web page because PPPoE tunnels are created dynamically. So I use two BVM next generation and BVM NG. It shows me the speeds per interfaces in kilobytes by default. Let's change it to minus U bits and it will show us in kilobits or megabits. So this is also quite useful thing. 
And the last step is to check logs of radio server. So if something is not going right, if something is not working, you cannot connect your router, you cannot connect your customer to PPPoE, you can go to Splink's administration logs and check the logs of radio server. Here we have administration logs files and the last files are radius debug and radius short. Radius short shows us just information that customer was logging, accepted, all log off and debug shows us more information uh, about which packets came, came in, etc. So here we can click on it and we see that what what packets were received by radius. So let's try it. Let's disconnect the customer again. So the time now is 14.59. Customer is not connected yet. Now it's reconnected. Yes, now it's reconnected. Let's go to administration logs and we can see here on files. Let's refresh it and new entries were added. So from 14. 14.59, so these are the entries and it shows that everything is working fine. So that's all from my side, thank you for your time.